Oh, 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 oh. Hi everyone, JJ here. Welcome back. Yes, Tesla Robotaxi rolled out in Austin today. My last video was questioning whether it was going to be delayed. They did have a good excuse for it with some Texas lawmakers questioning it, saying wait till September, but they decided to roll out today. Uh, coming ready or not and was it ready and is it autonomous that's what we're going to look at today here's elon with the announcement it's four dollars twenty flat fee per ride they were all tesla influencers of course so it's questionable whether they're going to post any video clips from there that are questionable but we still we do have some and that's what i'm going to do just have a look at question what's going on here how autonomous are they and how did that first day go now if you want to look at the things with no problems whatsoever go and watch the tesla promoter channels there are plenty of them i'm not a journalist but i do like to ask questions and not just do pr there's plenty of pr out there for tesla for sure all of those influences now this gizmodo article has the question in the headline here tesla and google's robo taxis still really aren't that autonomous well it's not a question but i'm going to look at that today the first waymo cars in new york will need real humans but teslas get a safety monitor yes waymo's planning to roll out in new york and they're in a bunch of cities already tesla just getting going in austin and before i get into this i don't want to seem like a, trying to find conspiracies or anything i'm just looking at what's going on i'm just asking questions i'm not trying to accuse anybody of anything now as i said you'll find a lot of tesla influencers who say it's absolutely great that they've launched finally after 10 years and remember elon said 10 years ago or 2016 he said that full self-driving will be able to drive coast to coast without touching the wheel in just months from now and here we are in 2025 with the rollout of robo taxis you know, there was another assertion prediction that there were going to be a million Tesla robo taxis on the road by 2020. That didn't happen. Here we are five years later and it's rolling out with some major caveats going on here, including that safety monitor. And is it teleoperated to a certain extent? We're going to have a look at some stuff, but this person seems disappointed. I love Tesla, but I'm disappointed in this rollout. All these years just to have an employee and a geofenced area. We should be way better than Waymo. In my opinion, never should have guaranteed June 2025 for a rollout. Should have just held off on it till it could do without an employee in the car and a no geofenced area. And that is the geofenced area they're going with. This is from the app, apparently. And if you know Austin, or if you look at a wider map of Austin, you see those areas there. It's pretty small. Waymo is bigger. They're expanding in cities. I think it was 50% in each city just recently. Perhaps, you know, there's a bit of competition here. Competitive spirit. I guess Waymo wants to try and beat Tesla. And that's not a bad thing, right? Some competition. Back to this article it notes in this article tesla's impending robo taxi service which is already out now comes with a whole list of caveats you'll need to agree to before you can huddle into the back seat of these autonomous vehicles and remember that they're just tesla influences just a small bunch and a small group of cars or perhaps they're not really that autonomous, Gizmodo says. The first Tesla Model Y Cybercab services will be limited to select participants, including Tesla influencers. But even then, drivers can expect to have a safety monitor in the driver's seat. Drivers? You mean passengers can expect to have a safety monitor? This may be a remote individual making sure the cars do not cause any vehicular snafus, but it also shows just how limited Tesla's initial rollout will be. And we can see evidence of this. We'll look at some videos and images of the safety monitor and possible remote operation as well so it says they're restricted to a geofenced area in austin texas that does not include airports 
Drivers can only get a ride between 6 a.m. and 12 a.m. Now, I haven't got any videos of the night session on that first day because I'm making this video after the day session. The limited areas and times for operation are likely a result of limiting possible run-ins with other drivers and needing the monitor to be awake and aware enough to deal with the car's odd behaviours. A few years before its robotaxi arm went belly up, GM's crews caught flack for employing similar remote monitors who were there to help the cars navigate complicated conditions. And we will have an example of that. I showed the clip straight up front of, of that possible intervention. Part of the conditions here, Sawyer Merritt posted this. It says, Tesla has given me permission to share the parameters of use. Note that service may be limited or unavailable in the event of inclement weather now that's your guess or mine what that is if it's raining will it shut down or does that mean something you know way more serious yet to be seen you know we've seen problems with sun glare that it has with sun glare on the cameras and there's that question mark over whether cameras and ai can handle sun glare and you know dust and fog i don't not sure what the weather is usually like in austin i think it's pretty sunny but maybe sun glare the issues it's going to be interesting to see what happens in different weather situations over time. And here we have the team that posted that Tesla AI is the most hardcore AI team on earth. A decade of hard work onto building best AI software and hardware to start robo-taxi service for the public. Today establishes the new era of physical AI dominance for Tesla. So grateful to be part of this mission. So there's the team there. And what has been noticed, you see in the left side of this picture, I'm just going to zoom in, have a look at this. Does that look like a steering wheel and a monitor there and there's pedals under the desk there too by the look of it? Is that the teleoperation? Is that what they're doing there? Or is that for some other reason, some other testing reason? And we'll have a look at that clip again. Is this an example of teleoperation? You'll see that it comes up to the corner, the steering wheel jitters to the left like it wants to go down that road, the indicator's on by the sound of it, and then it pulls back, and it looks like it's pulled back, possibly by a tally operator. I don't know that's the case. Let me know, somebody from Tesla or people who use FSD all the time, is this something that looks like, like a driver doing this, or is it the software? Let's have a look. We go see it. see how it yanks to the right there just we'll have a look at that one more time so what do you think about that that's part of a trip that was on the first day of robo taxis there is that teleoperation certainly the safety monitor and the passenger seat is not doing anything but you look on the screen it's really trying to go down that road and then it gets pulled back was that the software or teleoperation? What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And also, if you are getting value out of this episode so far, do remember to hit that like button to help the algorithm to spread it to more people. That would really be great. Thanks. All right. So I asked this question from of Whole Mars Catalog. And that's Omar, who's a, one of the biggest Tesla influencers, and he does videos of it all the time. I said, wait, isn't there a safety monitor and teleoperator on each car in Austin? And he said, no, the car is being driven by the onboard AI, not a teleoperator. Does he actually know that? He seems pretty sure. I don't know if he actually knows that. Is Tesla telling him that? Does he work for Tesla? He's. I think he says that he doesn't work for Tesla, but he, how would he know? If, anyway, I'll move on. And here's somebody, Dirty Tesla, who is a part of it. And they say, got it to mess up. I'm such a good FSD tester. And somebody asks, like a disengagement mistake? Question mark. I'm not sure how to classify a disengagement in this sense. Nobody in the driver's seat did anything, of course, but support did chime in. I'll post the clip soon. I'm just still getting footage and stuff. I need to go live soon too. Yikes, that's concerning. Somebody says, so I checked on his profile just before videoing this. There were clips of how good it is of the day there, but nothing like this at all. So either he didn't post the mistake or he's going to post it later. I don't know but he's posted other things that are pretty excited about FSD. 
So the next thing that's questionable here, well, it's not questionable because, I mean, in terms of safety, I, I want Tesla to be as safe as possible. Everybody wants this service to be as safe as possible. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but is it a little bit clandestine here? I mean, it's definitely so people don't have to touch the screen, but I don't know if it's the case. I'll give you some examples here. So somebody said, I noticed he held onto the handle the whole time. This is the safety monitor. Was the door opener reprogrammed to serve as an emergency stop? Now that would make sense. It would make sense. You, you can hit the button on the screen to stop it, but it would be much quicker for the safety operator to just have their hand on that handle all the time. That is actually more safer. I think it's a good thing if that's what it is. And just so it's not one photo, there are a number of photos of this. Somebody else says Rob Forth here. Turns out the safety supervisor in each Tesla Robotaxi has his right thumb constantly on the button, so probably programmed to be an emergency stop button. Makes sense, obviously, but yeah, there's smoke and mirrors, so that's the thing, is it a bit clandestine? Is it smoke and mirrors, which you know people have been saying, and I made a video like this, is it, is this how much of it is smoke and mirrors, or how autonomous is it? We've got the safety driver, and it is only the first day, you know, over time they'll get rid of that safety driver, you'd think, that's what happened with Waymo, they they tested in Austin even for six months with actually a driver in the driver's seat, and then they tested without a driver for six months without passengers, so Tesla just going full in. There's another one on the button there, another one on the button, and so there are quite a few different ones with the safety monitor on the button there, watching the screen, watching the road with the hand on the button. And this is an example of a video clip. You watch the person with their finger on the button and they take it off the button. And the tweet about this said that once they were sure that the robotaxi was going to turn the corner, okay, they took their finger off the button. Have a look at this and see what you think. Just in the right, bottom right corner there, they did that. I'll show you again, just in case you didn't see that. I hope you can see that. His thumb there takes it off when he's sure that it's going to take the corner, okay. So all of these questions. Now, this was another incident that looked like there was a drunk driver on the road. So some, definitely some safety involved there. And the safety monitor reaches up to the screen. I don't know if they push the button. Surely it was the kill button to either to pull over or emergency stop. I don't think they actually hit it and the car actually handled it okay. Take a look at this. Whoa. See that? We'll just go back a little bit. See, they touch, they reach up and touch the screen. I don't think they hit the button, but oh, they almost, almost did there. So that was actually, it was good that the car handled that, I guess. But even the safety monitor was a bit, seemed a bit anxious about that one. First day jitters as well. So Jerry Rig everything said here as well about the service itself. Turns out Tesla has to certify the FSD as a level four with the state of Texas before September 1st, 2025, or they have to take their cyber taxis off the road. And there is the significant legislation there. Texas passes robotaxi law requiring level four autonomy from September 1st. So we're interesting to see how that works out too, What if they can do that, if they can prove, or I just saw this one tweet, I haven't looked into that more, but if that's true, they've got some work to do there. And that was the question about the delay, that video, the last video I did was about the delay, would they have to delay it because of that? But no, they're going ahead. But some questions remain about how autonomous it is. So let me know what you think. Have they got teleoperators here? They've definitely got a safety monitor. Is that button on the side a kill switch? I would actually think it would be good if it, if it was that because that's safer. And do you think that influencers are going to post any videos that uh, show any mistakes or are they there to do PR? They basically are PR people, either paid or not paid or indirectly through X advertising, you know, through interaction or whatever. They are definitely PR people. But let me know what you think in the comments. And right now I'm going to put a related video right there and also a subscribe link on screen. Do subscribe. If you want to get more of these kinds of videos from me in the very near future, I do them at least five days a week. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.